D stands for distance and nautical miles. Speed is the S in knots because this is navigation for ships. And time is the T and that can be hours and minutes or we could also express it in hours and decimal hours. And that's what we're going to cover first because in order to do a DST triangle, we need to be able to express time in various ways to use the calculator. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to convert time to a decimal when we're dealing with minutes to use it in a calculator. So when we are converting uh, time or minutes of time into a decimal hour. What we're going to do is we're going to take the minutes of time and we're going to divide it by 60. So the operation in your calculator to go from minutes to decimal hour is to divide, divide by 60 because there are 60 minutes in each hour. So what this function is going to do is break it down into parts of an hour in decimal format. And the calculator likes that so we can do math and it recognizes that it's time and not based on 100th units. So let's try an easy one. Get your calculators out and use your phone or your calculator or whatever. Uh, get your calculator out. It makes it a lot easier to do the math. And we're going to do the first problem which is 45 divided by 60. Okay. Type into your calculator 45, hit the division key, hit 60, because that's how many minutes there are in an hour, and you should come up with 0.75. And that makes sense because 45 is three quarters of an hour, and 0.75 represents three quarters of a way through that hour. So it's not quite an hour because it's to the right of the decimal. So 0.75 is equal to 45 minutes of time and that little tick mark right there indicates minutes of time. Alright, let's try another one. Let's say we have 25 minutes and we want to figure out what that is in decimal form. 25 divided by 60, always 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. Put that in the calculator. 25 divided by 60 is going to give us a decimal and it's always good to round out to three places, okay? So in this case, I'm going to leave it at 0.417. It's always good to look at the next digit to see if it's a 5 or above. It's a, it's a 5 or above, we're going to round this to 8. If it's a 4 or below, we're going to leave it at 7. Most of the Coast Guard problems work out pretty good if you round it to the third decimal place. Okay, hopefully you got that one. Let's try another fairly simple one. 36 minutes in decimal form of an hour is going to be divided by 60 and this one ends up being 0.6 even because 36 is divisible 0.6 times through the hour to give us an even number. Okay. And the next one we're going to do is 14 minutes so go ahead and put 14 in your calculator hit the division symbol and divide it by 60 always because there's 60 minutes in an hour and we end up with 0.233 of an hour. So all of these units are part of an hour. Okay, it's not quite an hour. If it was an hour, it would be to the left of the decimal. Okay, so that's how you go from minutes to decimal. You divide by 60. Now let's see if we have a decimal, we've done some math in the calculator and we've ended up with part of an hour in decimal form and we now need to get it back to minutes. So let's say that through our triangle, which we're going to get to here shortly, we came out with a figure of 0.363 hours, meaning it's not quite an hour, it's less than an hour. Okay? How many minutes would that represent? Well, when you're going from decimal hours to minutes, we're going to multiply by 60. 
It's still 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. But the calculator function is the multiplication. So we're going to say 0.363 times 60, put that in your calculator, and always round to the whole minute. So in this case, we get 22 minutes. So if it's 22.1, make it 22. If it's 22.7, make it 23. If it's a 5 or above on the decimal, go ahead and round up. So 0.363 of an hour is equal to 22 minutes of time. All right, let's try another one. Let's say we have a decimal that we got in our calculator from doing some math, and we had 0.451 hours. So it's part of an hour, not quite an hour, not even half of the hour, because if it was half, this would be a five. So it's something less than a half an hour. So we're going to do 0.451 times 60, and punch that in your calculator and you should end up with 27 minutes of time. That makes sense because if this was a half an hour, this would be 0.5 or above, and that would put us at 30 something, but we're right below that, so it makes sense to be 27 minutes. Let's try another one. 0.785 is our decimal that we got from doing some math. We're gonna take 0.785 times 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour, and you should end up with 47 minutes, okay? This is just over 3 quarters of an hour. That's why it's a little bit more than 45 minutes. All right, and our last one is 0.583 of an hour. To get that into minute form, we're going to times 60. 0.583 times 60 gives us 35 minutes, okay? There's going to be times when you're going to do the decimal into minutes, and there's other times when you're going to do minutes into a decimal in order to do our DST, which is what we're going to get to next. Okay, so let's clear this off so we can talk about the DST triangle. Okay. All right. We use the DST triangle. Some places use 60D street. It's all very similar. We like to use the DST because it works when you're going past an hour, so you don't have to relearn something else. Uh, either way, it works just fine, whichever method that you choose. But we're going to focus on the DST triangle. So we draw a triangle. Okay. At the top of the triangle, we put D for distance. At the bottom left, we put speed, an S for speed. And the bottom right, we put a T for time. Now the functions that we're gonna put right below the D is the division symbol. And between the S and the T, we're gonna put the multiplication symbol. Now when you do a DST triangle, which is what we call this, there are two ways to work the triangle. Okay, from the top down and from the left to right. Okay, what that means is you have to have two of the factors to solve for the third. So for example, if you're solving for time, I just like to cover that up and kind of envision that. Going from top to bottom, I'd put in the distance in the calculator, hit division, speed distance divided by speed, okay, will give us time. If I'm solving for speed, distance divided by time gives us speed, top down. If I'm solving for distance, speed times time gives us distance. So you see if you go from top down or left to right, you'll always put it in the calculator correctly. All right, so let's do a DST problem together. I always recommend writing the DST triangle each time you do a problem that will help you memorize it and it also keeps all your work nice and organized, okay? So let's say that I have uh, 4.2 miles that I need to travel and I'm going to be going seven knots. That's what that K stands for, knots and nautical miles. 
So in your calculator, remember, top down, we're going to put in 4.2 in the calculator. Hit divide, seven knots. 4.2 divided by seven, and that's going to give you 0.6 of an hour. Now, typically you wouldn't tell your port captain or your captain or mate that you're going to be there in 0.6 of an hour. We'd want to make that into real time. So in order to do that, we're going to use the principles we just learned. When going from a decimal to minutes, we times it by 60. Because we want to know how many minutes that represents of an hour. So if you put in your calculator 0 0.6 times 60, you're going to get 36 minutes. Okay. So in order to travel 4.2 miles at 7 knots, it's going to take 36 minutes. All right, let's try another one. And you can pause these videos whenever you want to or rewind to see something. If you didn't get the same answer, sometimes it's just a matter of how you punched it in the calculator. It tends to have a mind of its own sometimes. Okay, so let's say in this case we are solving for distance. So I'm just going to put a little question mark there. And in this case we have a speed of 5 knots and we have 46 minutes of time that we're going to travel. Remember that's a minute symbol. I can always write that out too. 46 minutes. No distance. I'm not going to go top down. I'm going to go left to right. Okay. Speed times time. So 5 times 46. The problem is, is that the calculator, if you put 46 straight in the calculator, it's going to think it's based on 100s. But in actuality, for navigation, we're basing it on 60s because we have 60 minutes in an hour. So you can't just punch this in. It won't recognize that it's based on time. A normal calculator is going to base it on 100 units. So the first thing we've got to do is convert this to a decimal. And I mentioned earlier that when you're going from minutes to a decimal, we're going to divide by 60. Okay. 46 divided by 60 is going to give us 0.767 of an hour. These are the same, it's just different units. Okay, this is minutes and this is a decimal hour. So put in your calculator 5 times 0.767. 5 times 0.767. When you do that, going left to right, you should get an answer of 3.8 nautical miles. So we have five knots available on the vessel. We have 46 minutes that's converted to 0.767 hours. When we multiply that together, we end up with 3.8 nautical miles. You have to know two values to solve for the third. That's the point of the DST triangle. Okay. And feel free to pause, like I mentioned, if you didn't get the same answer that I did. Sometimes that happens. Okay, on this one, let's solve for speed. So we have 71.4 nautical miles. So we're really getting going uh, somewhere. And we have 4 hours and 45 minutes in order to get there. How fast do we need to go? Well, in this case, we're going top down. So we're going to go 71.4 divided by 4 hours and 45 minutes. But remember, if you just type in 445 into the calculator, it's going to think that's 445. And that's not the case. It's 4 hours and then it's some minutes into the next hour. So what we've got to do is we've got to convert just the minutes, just the minutes to a decimal. Go ahead and bring down the hours because we're not going to leave that off, but we're also not going to convert anything. Everything to the right of that is going to be our decimal. So when we're going from minutes to a decimal, we divide by 60, okay? And we know that when we type in 45 divided by 60, we're going to get 0.75. So it's 4.75 hours. So
So in 71.4 nautical miles, we're going to divide that by 4.75 hours, and we should end up with 15 knots. Okay, so we would have to really ring up some speed in order to get there on time. So 71.4 divided by 4.75 gives us 15 knots. Remember, you cannot type 445 into the calculator because we are using time for navigation. So we've got to make it decimal hours by dividing the minutes only. Just the minutes are divided by 60. Don't divide the hour. Just bring that down. 4.75 is the total amount of time. Okay, practice that one. That one's a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, now this one we're going to solve for time. So we don't know time. Okay. So we have 5.5 nautical miles that we need to travel, and we're going to do 9.2 knots. Okay, this one's fairly straightforward. We're going to go from top to bottom, distance divided by speed, 5.5 into your calculator, divided by 9.2 knots is going to give you 0.598 of an hour. So because I see this as 0.5, I know that's more than 30 minutes, somewhere around there. But I'm not going to guess. I'm going to go ahead and convert this into minutes. 0.598 to get to minutes is times 60. 0.598 times 60 is going to give us right about 36 minutes. So in order to travel 5.5 nautical miles using a speed of 9.2 knots, it's going to take me approximately 36 minutes. Okay? I hope that this gives you a good overview on how to use the D Street Triangle. Uh, it does take some practice, but make sure the biggest problems are when you're dealing with time. If you have minutes, convert it to a decimal. If you end up with a decimal like we did here, convert it back to minutes by using time 60. If you have hours, just bring those down. Those don't change. And always remember that it's top down, the order of operation, or left to right. Okay? Thank you for watching our video.